there we have a new member class that will be starting as you see the on our fresh start sunday which is september 8th that's when all the new classes for the fall will be starting so hope you will join us and it fits very well with our theme today we're going to kind of go through our discipleship process grow up connecting with god today next sunday grow in getting in the word with our fellow believers and then the first sunday in in september we'll look at uh grow up. How do we uh, connect with the Lord? And one of the great opportunities we have to do that is uh, on our Messiah Share Day, which is get this date on your calendar, September 14th uh, in the morning, and then we'll have a lunch uh, that day as well. But we have some on-site activities to help share the gospel and love of Christ. We'll uh, be sending out some groups, the men with the mission, doing the homeless thing, and I think the choir's going to be going, and doing some singing to our shut-ins, and uh, just talking to the quilting ladies about possibly having something as well that day, but uh, we'll have a little more details uh, next Sunday uh, as well. Um, Matt, you are also invited to the fall retreat. There's an insert in your bulletin about that. And also today at late service, uh, our uh, district education executive is gonna be here to formally present us with our accreditation Certificate. We were reaccredited as a Lutheran school, and that's kind of a nice uh, feather in our cap. And praising the Lord for that. So continue to pray for our school and early childhood ministries as well, and uh, for more and more families to get connected to Christ there. So let's go ahead and stand up and share the peace of the Lord before our opening hymn this morning.
setting of our divine service, page 184. We gather and make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. You may be or be seated for our time of confession.
and the officers of Israel, and they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Long ago your fathers lived beyond the Euphrates, Terah, the father of Abraham, and of Nahor, and they served other gods. Now therefore, fear the Lord, and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your fathers served beyond the river and in Egypt, and serve the Lord. And if it is evil in your eyes, if it is evil in your eyes to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods of your fathers served in the region beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land you will dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our fathers up from the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, and who did those great signs in our sight and preserved us in all the way that we went, and among all the peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore, we will also serve the Lord. For he is our God. O oh Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. And the epistle reading for today is from Ephesians 5. Walk in love. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore do not become partners with them. For at one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of light is found in all that is good and right and true. And try to discern what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. O oh Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. We rise and join in the Alleluia's. St. John, the sixth chapter. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in me. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. As the living Father sent me, I live because of the Father, so whoever feeds on me, he also will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like the bread the fathers ate and died. Whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. Jesus said these things in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. When many of the disciples heard it, they said, This is a hard saying. Who can listen to it? 
But Jesus, knowing in himself that his disciples were grumbling about this, said to them, Do you take offense at this? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh is no help at all. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. For there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning who those were who did not believe and who it was who would betray him. And he said, This is why I told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. After this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer walked with him. Jesus said to the twelve, Do you want to go away as well? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. And we have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to and confessing our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of His Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten and not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under conscious Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets, and I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And you may be seated. Sammer's going to share the children's message with us if we have any little ones to come join us this morning. If not, we'll all be kids. All right. Looks like you guys are all kids this morning. <laughs> Doesn't it feel good to be young? All right. So, you guys see this little decoration that I have up here? Um, it's in a shape. What type of shape do you guys think that's? A house. A house. Okay. <laughs> We're going to be legit, right? Okay. So a house. On this, it has a very important scripture. It says, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord out of Joshua chapter 24, verse 15. So there are lots of important decisions that we have to make every day, especially as we get older. And um, so I want to talk about to you about a really important decision that we must make every single day. Um, the Bible says, choose for yourselves today whom you will serve. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So every day, we must make that decision to follow our Lord and Savior and to serve Him, or whether we will serve someone else or something else in this world. Every day, that's our decision. And so perhaps we will have to choose whether to serve God or to serve our own selfish desires. Maybe we will even have to choose between following God or following our friends. As parents, which many of you are in this room, um, have a very important decision to make, and that is in guiding your children as they grow up, and that is to teach them about Jesus. You are all here today, which is awesome, 
and um, we hope that is a big part of your decision that you make. As for you and your household, you will serve the Lord. Will you guys please pray with me and repeat after me? Dear Lord, Dear Lord, help us to make the right choices each day. Help us to make the right choices each day. Help us to make the choice to follow you. Help us to make the choice to follow you. Serve you. Serve you. And lead others to you. And lead others to you. Amen. Amen. You may go back to your seats. <laughs> <laughs> and if you want to close, we have a bulletin up here for you as well. Thank you, Amber. We'll continue with uh, our hymn of the day, Oh, Bless the House. Speaking about, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Thank you. Germans and about 50% Norwegians and at the time when this young pastor came there the president of the congregation was German you know there was always a little bit of uh, competition and zinging back and forth between the, di the different heritages and so uh, when the president would get up at the church meetings he'd always start off and tell some Norwegian jokes and of course pastor didn't really like that because that meant half the congregation was kind of ticked off as the meeting was beginning. So he thought for a while, asked for some uh, inspiration. He came up with this idea. So he went to the president and he said, he said, John, when you get up and you want to tell one of these ethnic jokes of yours before the meetings, here's an idea. Tell it about the Hittites. Because the Hittites in the Old Testament were wiped out. So there's no way you can possibly 
offend anyone. And then John said, hey, that's a good idea. I'll do that. And so the pastor thought, well, this is good. The next meeting comes around, and John gets up. He said, now, before we begin, I'd like to tell a little joke about these two Hittites, Sven and Oli. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, see, pastor joke, right? Well, this is one of the passages of the many ites. Uh, let, let me read for you uh, Joshua chapter 24. This is the last uh, chapter of Joshua. And in many ways, we're talking about this in Bible class today. It's sort of like Joshua's last will and testament. And it is a time for a renewal of the covenant between uh, the people of God and, and God. And so in verse 11, here's where you see all the, all the ites. Uh, and he says to them, And you went over the Jordan and came to Jericho, and the leaders of Jericho fought against you. And also the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Girgashites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites, and gave them into your hand. So there's seven ites there of, of Joshua. Uh, and some of you may have read some of Charles Spurgeon's uh, a great theologian, some of his devotions over the year, he, he has another night to add to that list of seven. And he calls it the betweenites. The betweenites. When you get stuck between following the world and following God. And here's how uh, C.H. Spurgeon talked about that. Betweenites. I can see that you are, you're betweenites. The saints will be ashamed of you because you did not join with Christ in the day of battle. And the adversary himself, or the devil, will despise you because you shrank away even from him. Be one thing or the other. In some ways, uh, that quote from Spurgeon reminds me of in the book of Revelation where it talks about the seven churches and God speaks about one of the churches and he says, I spit you out of my mouth because you're lukewarm. You're neither hot nor cold. You're just blah. <laughs> and to be honest, sometimes in our life of following God, we find ourselves in between. Wanting to go with the flow, wanting to go with what the world says is good, you know, and to kind of fit in and be popular and all of that, even though it might not fit with what God wants. And of course the Israelites, uh, even more seriously, they were going after and wanting to to revert to some of the gods of their of their past. So Joshua gives gives them uh, a beautiful covenant renewal. And this is my prayer for us. You know, each summer at the end of the summer, we kind of go back through our, our discipleship process. And it's a bit of a covenant renewal for us too, to kind of remind ourselves and to renew our our commitment to want to follow God every day. It's like and Sam said in the, in the children's message there. So I don't want to be in between. I am sure you don't either. And I know God doesn't want us either. He wants us to be wholly committed to him as he is wholly committed to us. So as Joshua begins this covenant renewal, he starts with sort of a, a walk down memory lane with the beginning of the people of Israel because they were not a people, right, at one time. And Abram, before he became Abraham, was simply Abram. You know, his name means father, but God gave him a new name, Abraham, the father of many peoples. And here's how he starts this uh, at the beginning of Joshua 24. Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and summoned the elders, the heads, the judges, the officers of Israel, and they presented themselves to God before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Long ago your fathers lived beyond the Euphrates, Terah, the father of Abraham and of Nahor, and they served other gods. And I took your father Abraham from beyond the river and led him through the land of Canaan and made his offspring many. I gave him Isaac. Of course, then he goes down and becomes Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And then he talks about how under Jacob is when the famine was coming, right? And they went to uh, Egypt and uh, came into great power there. And then he, he recounts not only how he took a single man and made him into this great nation and called him to be his people, but how then when they became slaves in Egypt, he also recounts from the, for them 
how he delivered them from their slavery. Which, by the way, this is a covenant reminder for you and me, too. God called you and me, even though we were in no way deserving of all of his blessings and grace and mercy. And God has delivered me and you from our slavery too, slavery to sin and the devil and even death itself. So he goes on, he says, I sent Moses and Aaron, I plagued Egypt with what I did in the midst and afterwards I brought you out. Then I brought your fathers out of Egypt and you came to the sea. And then he talks about bringing them in to the promised land and how he was there with them. He says, then I brought you to the land of the Amorites who lived on the other side of the Jordan. They fought with you and I gave them into your hand and you took possession of the land and I destroyed them before you. And he talks about the kings and the false gods that he defeated. So I ask you to remember to remember God's call upon you. This is one of the questions we're going to ask at Bible classes. How is it that the Holy Spirit brought you to faith? Who did he use? How did he put that call upon you to say, I have called you by name, you are mine. And then how has he been faithful to his promises? How has he shown how he has delivered you from, from your slavery to sin and death and the devil as well? And then Joshua gives the big, the big challenge. He says, whom will you serve? Let that sink in. Whom will you serve? The gods of this world or the one and only true God? And he says, will you serve the gods of the nations? You know, and it's, I mean, we don't have a, an idol out there. Or maybe I should say that. <laughs> maybe there are some literal idols out there. But I was thinking about the big three idols, you know, that we get kind of sucked away. The devil loves to use them to tempt us. Uh, possessions, you know, stuff, pleasures, doing the things that we want to do, right? And our world's all about that. Hey, feels good to do. Or even power. And those become the idols in one form or another. And so, you know, if Joshua was standing here today, he can give us the same challenge. Who will you serve? Do you serve the gods of the nations? You know, so Abraham, his father, before that, they had their their gods, but the one true God comes and calls them and makes them his people. And then he says in verse 14, put away, put away the gods that your father served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. And that word put away is very interesting. It means like to completely turn away from. And it's, it's, uh, it, it's said in Hebrew, it sounds like this, sure. Uh, and it's interesting that the word for repent in Hebrew is shu. And shu means to turn, but to repent. Here he's saying turn away from all of these false gods. Completely put them away, he says. And then he calls us to turn to God. To choose to serve God. Put away the gods that your fathers served beyond the river and in Egypt. And then we have our theme verse for today. I'm going to read the first part, and then you join me in the second half. He says, If it is evil in your eyes to serve the Lord, then choose this day whom you serve, whether the gods your fathers served in the region beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. Now read this with me. But as for me and for my house, we will serve the Lord. Let's read it one more time. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And in the study Bible, uh, the Lutheran from Concordia, the study Bible, has a really interesting note about this choice. What would you choose? And I'm going to read the quote, and then I'm going to flush out the illustration here. It says, basically, choose between two groups of worthless gods, the Mesopotamian gods or the Canaanite gods, you know, the ones from one side of the Jordan or uh, the other side of the Jordan. He says, this is like saying to a hungry person, if you reject this banquet of delicacies, you may choose between garbage or dung. Yeah, it's pretty graphic. And, and this is... I mean, but that's a, such a great illustration. He says, you've got this beautiful, wonderful banquet. 
of being in a relationship with our loving Creator God, our Savior God, our Sanctifier God. But he says if you reject this, then you basically, here's your choice. A bag of garbage or a bag of dung. He says not, not too much of a choice to sure choose these gods or these gods. Joshua is trying to make an exclamation point on the blessings of choosing to serve God. Who will you serve? As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That is a covenant promise. That is us promising to God, we want to serve you, we want to follow you every day. But of course, I don't do that every day, and neither do you. Sadly, we are sinners. And Joshua goes in and he tells the, the Israelites too, he says, yeah, you're going you're gonna to mess up on that because you're sinners. And that would be true of me too. But the calling remains the same. And in our heart as believers, that is our desire. We want to connect with God each day. And so the people answered, verse 16, they said, Well, far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve the other gods. And the Lord, he says, and, they kind of, and then they kind of recount what God did, how they, he won the battles for them. And he says, and this is what they say in verse 18, And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore, we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. And again, the, the study Bible has a really important note on this too, and we're going to dive into this more in the Bible class today. Is This is all about grace. Because this is a call to believers to say, every day I want to follow you. An unbeliever cannot choose to follow God by himself or herself. We don't have that in us. So it's all about grace. There was nothing great about Abram when God chose him. His choosing of Abram and making him Abraham was a great example of grace. And even though the Israelites would rebel, 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 by grace, God would call them back. So this is a really, it's a prayer of sanctification. Of having been saved, having been delivered from slavery, we call that justification. And all that needed to be done for that to happen, we can look up here and see our crucifix and be reminded Jesus has already done that. This covenant promise is about, as a believer, to say, Every day, Lord, I want to follow you. Every day, Lord, for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And here's the, here's the, the study note, study Bible note. It says, This choosing of God is a God-given, grace-filled thing. And I, lo I love that phrase. A God-given, grace-filled thing. You know, faith is a gift from God. Our ability to follow God is a gift from God. As we are empowered, as we said in the prayer today, we are empowered by the Holy Spirit to live our life for Him, to live those lives of sanctification. And it goes on and says, The choice here is not made by unbelievers who are choosing the Lord for their salvation. This is impossible for unbelievers because of their naturally sinful condition. This is a choice of a believer who, like Joshua himself, are led by the Holy Spirit and determined not to abandon the faith that God has given them. You know, that's really what the word discipleship means. It means to walk in, to follow after Jesus. And will you grab your, grab your bulletin and just open it up like this to the inside here. And this is how we have kind of captured our discipleship process. So if we want this covenant promise, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We want to be growing in these three ways. And it's all about connecting to God. And it's also all about the Word of God. So will you read with me what it says there under Grow Up? I'm connecting with God through weekly worship and spending time daily in the Word of God. Now, next week we're going to talk about getting in the Word with our fellow believers, you know, in small groups and Bible study, and even when you're praying, you know, maybe in two or, or two or three are gathered. But today, this getting in the Word of God is talking about your own quiet time with the Lord. Really, the two ways the Spirit helps us to connect to God is what we're doing right now in worship. 
And I hope you will make being in worship, you know, a priority. If you can't be here in person, you know, you can tune in on online or, you know, attend somewhere else if you're uh, in another town. But make that, keep that a priority. And remember, when you are doing that, um, that is the Spirit helping that covenant promise to be alive in you. You know, but once a week isn't enough. <laughs> We need a booster shot every day. So God encourages us to be in the Word every day, to be talking to Him in prayer every day. So grow up, it says, I'm connecting with God through weekly worship and spending time daily in His Word. So what does that actually look like then? You know, to say, as for me in my house, we will serve the Lord. Well, we don't even have to guess. Joshua gives a good example of it too, a little bit earlier, before the, you know, he kind of challenges them in verse 15, uh, and then they say, yeah, we're going to do it, and in verse 14, he, he actually reminded them, and he reminded you and me of, well, what does that service of the Lord look like, and, and here's what he said, verse 14, now therefore fear the Lord, and serve him, and listen to these two words, in sincerity and in faithfulness. Some of the translations say in truthfulness. And, and sincerity means with our whole heart, with our whole being. You know, it's so easy to kind of be half-hearted. <laughs> so yeah, well God, you know, I'll, I'll carve out an hour for you on Sunday, that's good. But you know, Wednesday or Saturday, you know, I want that to be my time. But Joshua didn't say, well, as for you in my house, we will serve the Lord on Sunday morning, you know, for a couple hours. That's, that's not what he said. It's every day. And that's why connecting with him and being in the Word each day is so important. And by the way, this is a great reminder for myself, too. You know, to be in the Word, not just when I'm getting ready for sermons or Bible class or whatever, to just be in the Word so the Spirit can draw me closer and keep me closer to the Father, to the Son, and to the Spirit. So he says... Serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. You know, and again, the faithfulness is kind of that consistently, day after day, to make the Word of God and the worship of God a priority. And when we do that, we're, that's the Spirit helping us to do this, to, to grow up, to connect with God through weekly worship and, and daily time in the Word. So I hope you see that. You know, every time you hear the Spirit calling and come to worship God, you are connecting in worship with Him to help you grow. And every time you open up Scripture or devotional book or materials, you are also connecting to God through that time in the Word. So we hear Joshua reminding us, which is really the Holy Spirit speaking through him, reminding us, put away those other gods and choose whom you will serve. And I'd like to close with a hymn verse. So we grab your hymnals and open up to him 819. We're not singing it today, but I wanted us to read the last verse of him 819. It sing praise to God the highest good. Because verse 5 is really echoes this verse and this call of Joshua and the Spirit of God to put away other gods and to choose this day whom we will serve. So, hymn 819, sing praise to God, the highest good. Let's read verse 5 as our closing prayer. All who confess Christ's holy name, give God the praise and glory. Let all who know his power proclaim aloud the wondrous story. Cast every idol from its throne, for God is God, and he alone. To God, all praise and glory. Amen. To God, all praise and glory. And we now worship our loving God with our tithes and with our offerings.
for today, Ron and Chris Barcelona, you ask prayers for their grandson, uh, Mitchell, who is suffering from cancer. We are also going to do a special prayer or late service for Ashley McCargo. Uh, she is uh, heading off on Saturday to a mission trip to Costa Rica. And I know in the bulletin it had listed the day of uh, Noor as having a pacemaker maker surgery in in uh, September, but he had it in, uh, just this past August, the 15th, and so he is home and doing well. So we will keep all of those in mind as we include them in our prayers. So let's uh, pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Father, we thank you that you have sent the great Good Shepherd who has compassion on his flock. In his name, we lift up our prayers for the family of God, for every nation, tribe, people, and language, for all those who hunger for the true bread of life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant us always, O oh God, to work for the food that endures to eternal life. Bless the ministry of this congregation in our community, especially through the work of our Messiah Day School and our Early Childhood Center. We rejoice in the opportunity for accreditation for our school. And we ask that you continue to bless our enrollment. Lord, and now at this time, we also pray that you be with Ashley as she prepares for her mission trip to Costa Rica. Pray that you grant her safe travels and a chance to lift you up through the work she is doing. In all our outreach efforts, we pray that we may embrace Jesus as the Christ and believe that he is the true bread of life who has come from heaven. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. And now, Lord, bestow your power of healing upon the sick and hurting. And especially today, we lift up those that are mentioned in our bulletin and those we have mentioned today, Margie, Doris's sister, Sylvia, for Dave, for Sydney and Trina, and now for Mitchell as well, that in accordance with your will, they may receive strength from your healing hand and give thanks to your name. Strengthen their faith and assure them of your presence in all circumstances. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Father, your Son assures us that his flesh is true food, and his blood true drink, and that those who feed on him will live forever because of him. By your Spirit, prepare our hearts to welcome him as he comes to us in this holy supper, that we may rejoice in his promises and depart in peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now, Lord, Heavenly Father, we gratefully remember the sufferings and death of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, for our salvation. Rejoicing in his victorious resurrection from the dead, we draw strength from his ascension before you, where he ever stands for us as our own high priest. And in our prayers today, we remember the families of those who have lost loved ones. Especially today, we pray for the family and friends of Becky Schumacher, for the Spielman family mourning the passing of Hank's mother, Helen, for the family of Margie Myers, cousin Margaret, whose husband died recently. And now also that we pray for the family and friends of Kathy Cade as we mourn her passing. Give to these families and all who have lost loved ones the certain hope of life with you forever. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Graciously, Father, receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. For to you alone we give all glory, honor, and worship. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we continue now with the service of the sacrament. And if you want to follow along, you can follow along on that in place 194. The Lord be with you.
praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Thank you. 